Well, hello again. In this example, you will learn how to solve for internal moments in a multi-span beam using the moment distribution method. Specifically, we will do this by balancing all of the joints simultaneously. We're going to look at this three-span continuous beam. And as we recognize here, moment distribution method is to be used. And our target is to find the internal moments. The first step of the process is to identify our joints and once we identify those we need to go ahead and lock those against rotation. So that's what we are going to do here and effectively what has happened when we lock these against rotation is we have created three separate beams all of which have fixed connections at each end. The next thing I have to do is compute the stiffness factors at each joint, at least the interior joints joint B and joint C based on the conditions of the fixed fixed members. Now these are something that I should already know that the stiffness factor at joint B of member BA is equal to 4 EI over L and in this case L is 30 feet. Stiffness factor at joint B of member BC is equal to 4 EI over 20 and then we can move on to joint C looking at member CB that's 4 EI over 20 and KCD is equal to 4 EI over 30. Recognize here that the reason it was the way it is is because we are uniform material across the entire length of the beam and also a uniform moment of inertia. Well, these stiffness factors can be used to calculate the distribution factors for each of the joints. So starting here, distribution factor for joint B attributed to member BA is 4 over 30. So the stiffness factor for the individual member divided by the stiffness factor for the total joint. And then we know that the distribution factor at each joint must be equal to 1. So if we want to find out what this one is, we can just go ahead and subtract off. So we get 0 0.4 and 0 0.6. In a like fashion, we can get it for joint C. That'll give us 0 0.6. Once again, I can get the other distribution factor by subtracting that off. That becomes 0 0.4. Now that is based on the internal joints. The distribution factors for the end joints are dependent upon what those were prior to us locking. So, for instance, at point A, it was a roller, which means it had been free to rotate. What that means is that any moment applied to joint A has to be taken by member AB. There's nothing else there to take part of that load. So, distribution factor of AB is 1.0, and in a like fashion, joint D had a similar situation. So, distribution factor of DC is also 1.0. So we have the distribution factors. Next thing is to compute the fixed end moments. Remembering that these are all fixed now. We have the known loads and we have the known span lengths. So what we will do is we will look to beam charts to identify what those factors should be. So obviously for a distributed load it's WL squared over 12. So I'm going to show you here. So the distributed load is 4 kips per linear foot times 20 feet squared over 12. Or we do have a span length that is 30 feet. And that is going to be all over 12. So let me just write that. We also have for this down here 30 kips times 30 feet all divided by 8. So that works out to be 100 
112.5 kit feet. This one works out to be 133.3 kit feet. This one works out to be 300 kit feet. So let's come back here and let's go ahead and write those on. We get that 112.5, 112.5, 300, all these having units of kit feet, and the 133.3. It is worthwhile to remember that when we are using the moment distribution method, we are looking at this sign convention saying clockwise is positive. So think about what that would mean. It means that would be a positive, that would be a negative negative, positive, negative, positive. So when we translate that over to our table, that's the way the signs are going to show up. Speaking of the table, it's time to get that assembled. And What I'd like to do is go ahead and label the joints that we are considering. And the next thing we put up here at our joints are the distribution factors associated with each of those. We decided at AB that distribution factor was 1.0, but for BA it was 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, and once again 1.0. Next thing to place in the table are the fixed end moments. Those come from this. And so we can go ahead and write those in, negative 1, 12.5, 1, 12.5, negative 133.3, 133.3, positive, negative 300, and a positive 300. Okay, that gets your table set up. You are now ready to start doing some distribution based upon the distribution factors. Let's keep in mind that this represents the moments that are present just to the left and just to the right of joint B. Query that those are not in balance because those need to sum up to be equal to zero. So that's the process we're going to be following here. I will only do this for a couple of joints this first time around but I'm going to show you the explicit calculations that we will use to identify how we distribute those particular moments. So let's take a look at joint B first. What we'll do is we will sum up the moments that are present at joint B. We will find out that that works out to be negative 20.8. Let me come back to joint B just to make sure you understand where those numbers are coming from. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and distribute that moment because we know that in order to get this to balance out, we're going to have to add on 20.8 kip feet to that particular joint. So look how this is done. I take the distribution factor, and the negative, by the way, is just to account for the fact that we need to flip signs right here. So that is 0 0.4. Look where the 0 0.4 came from, multiplied by negative 20.8, and that will be 8.32. Now we want to see how much gets distributed to member BC. And that will be equal to 12.48. Okay, so I have those distribution factors. That's easy enough. I will come back here and go ahead and write those in. 8.32, 12.48. Let's go ahead and handle joint C now. So just pay attention to the numbers that are right up here because those will be the ones we use. Joint C is 133.3 plus a negative 300 gives me negative 180. 7.5. Let's keep in mind that what you would have to do is you'd have to add on 187.5 to that joint to get it to balance out. And so as we go to do that distribution, that's exactly what is going to happen. Negative 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 
multiplying by negative 187.5 that will equal 100.02 and then we can see how much of that gets distributed to the other side of the joint negative 187.5 that's 66.68 I can take that put it back here in my table 100.02 66.68. Now in order to get the joints at A and B balanced out, if I sum this up it doesn't sum up to be equal to zero, so I need to add back to that joint a positive 112. And since the distribution factor is 1, that 412 will be placed right here. And the same thing down at joint B, I need to balance this out so it sums up to be 0, so I need to add a negative 300, and since the distribution factor is 1.0, all of that negative 300 gets placed right here. The next step is going to be to handle the carryover. What this means is that whenever you do a distribution at a joint, if the members are fixed-fixed, which they are in our particular case, half of that moment carries over to the opposite side of the member. So for instance, I know that half of that is going to carry over this way, which would be 56.25, but half of that 8.32 will carry over here, which will be 4.16. Half of this will carry over this way, 6.24, and half of this will carry over this way, 50.01. Half comes over here, 33.34, half of this coming over here, negative 150. I'm going to take the opportunity to just go ahead and draw a line. So as you look at the black numbers, the black numbers were the distributions that happened that brought each joint into equilibrium. But once we handled the carryover, our joints are no longer in equilibrium. Take a look at point A. It needs to sum up to be zero, and yet it is currently reading 4.16 no longer do the moments at joint B sum up to be equal to zero. So I'll show you that distribution one more time. We need to then get joint A to come up to be zero. We would then sum up these numbers, distribute them according to the distribution factors up here. That would get negative 42.5 and negative 63.76. Then you'll take these numbers, sum them up, then distribute them according to these distribution factors here. That'll be 86.76 and 57.50. And then lastly, we need to handle this one, which would be negative 33.34. Of course, once the distribution is done, you do a carryover and that'll just get those numbers carrying over a half, always a half when it's a carryover, and you keep doing that over and over and over again until you start seeing that these differences that occur are very, very small. And at some point in time you have to decide what is small enough. What I have done for you here is I have provided that full moment distribution table. I think it would be helpful if we drew some dividing lines here just kind of to draw your eye at each of the distributions. So we do a distribution, then we do a carryover. Distribution, then a carryover. And what you should be noticing with all of these is that the differences get smaller and smaller. See how we come down here? They get smaller and smaller. And what you're going to do is you're going to notice that the very last step that I took, I did a distribution, but I didn't do a carryover. Now you and I both know that that is going to cause us to be a little bit off because we should have handled the carryover. However, the difference right now is extremely small and we are comfortable with that. So at some point in time, like I say, you have to call it good enough. And so the next step you do is you just go ahead and take all these numbers and you add them up to get your total moment. Take all these numbers, add them up, that would include there, to get this total moment and likewise.
And so the thing to pay attention to is that when you add these numbers up, they sum up to be equal to zero, which means I am now in equilibrium at joint C. I am now in equilibrium at joint B, and this represents what the internal moment is at each of those locations. That concludes this example. As always, it is a beautiful day for studying structures.